Hey guys, so this is just the first video of the series, and essentially we're going to be covering ELE 632 signaling systems number two. Um, all notes will be will be derived from uh, Professor Zatino Glue's notes online. Uh, be feel feel free to uh, check out his notes and to get even more detailed uh, detail analysis and everything that I'm going to go through to throughout the series. Um, Again, I, this is a disclaimer that I do not own any of this, these materials. I'm just teaching it to you guys as a personal favor, and I make no money off of this whatsoever. So, and all rights and reserves are uh, for Dr. Zatino Glue and all other people who made, who are part of making this all this material. Okay. So, in the beginning of Signal and Systems, uh, in Signal System Ones, we dealt with a lot of things called uh, continuous time and linear time invariant systems. And so, what continuous meant is that you had a signal coming in, and at every single point on the line, you you had uh, you had certain information like a like a input and an output. So it would look something like this. So in continuous, you would have something like x of t in continuous time going through a system and coming out of y of t, and essentially x of t would look something like this as a waveform in terms of time, and then it was something that something I get. Uh, similar would come out as well on the other side. However, in signal systems too, we'll we'll be covering something called discrete time. And what discrete time is is essentially non-continuous. It's essentially point by point, much like the digital world that we that we that a lot of digital communications use this, and a lot of um, it's like point by point basis, depending on the number uh, of n or n time. So to get into the more of that, uh, we use the kind of notation that uh, we, so we, instead of x of t, we now use x of n. And what x of n is actually, just a little graph here, it's the signal x of t in a sampler. And the sampler is like a switch, and it closes at the period uh, n. So it open and closes, it open and closes. So the amount of samples n is equal to, uh, sorry, the amount of samples, the amount of samples taken for t is n t of s. So essentially what happens, or x of, or y of t or y of n comes out, and essentially what happens is that x of t goes in and a sampler, an ideal sampler, at every n interval, this switch closes, and something y of n of that n uh, that particular n time will come out. So essentially, you have data points now. You don't have a continuous function that describes every instantaneous process, every instantaneous time. But now you have a essentially a set. So x of n is going to be equal to a set of different elements. And these elements can be anything. So what's that used for? So back in ELE 504 in, uh, my, in uh, electronic systems, you learn that electronic circuits, you learn that uh, if I wanted to make a filter, for example, a Chebyshev filter or a uh, sailing key filter or a, uh, 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 I forgot the other name, but it's something Rov, it's a Russian name, uh, those filters, uh, essentially you would take out a couple of resistors and a couple of transistors and essentially resistors and capacitors and you would put you in like inductors and you would make a filter out of it. But what if I told you that instead of using those equations for the Chebyshev and um, and the other one, the other something rough filters, what if I told you that instead of using those equations you can actually essentially come up with a X of N that would describe each and every single one of these filters. And so that's exactly what this does. X of n is actually a representation of a set of different components within your circuit design that can actually be used and manipulated to create certain types of filters. So essentially, instead of going back, redesigning everything of all those components, you can just use uh, you can just describe the component in discrete time, and the, the filter in discrete time, and then you can create a, a certain number set inside of MATLAB or using another, or programming, or you can even use it by hand, but you can also, you will be able to create multiple filters without going back and messing around with the actual physical components. So that's the whole point of this, uh, this set here for now. Uh, you can make a lot of things like this, especially in terms of communications, uh, control theory, all that stuff. But the notation is that 
x of t goes into a sampler, and the time of the sampler uh, is at n t of s. t of s is the period of each sample, and n is which at, at what interval of sample. Okay, so for example, if I have n x of n is equal to 1, 3, 5, something like that, right? So we know that x of n is described as a set that has three elements, so 1, 3, and 5, and let's say that this element is n equals 0. So at n equals 0, in the beginning, its initial element is 1, x of n is equal to 1. At 1, n of equals to 1, it equals to 3. At n equals to 2, is equal to 5. Okay, this is just really basic stuff right now, and this is called a finite set. Another one is x of n, where we have an infinite set, whereas we don't know, well, it will, we don't really know how, like, what exact numbers come out, uh, 6, 7, 3, dot, dot, dot. So this is called an infinite set. And so in terms of these infinite sets and finite sets, we can use these equations to find the impulse response and also the zero state response and the total, uh, the total system response as well. So uh, I'll be getting into that in the next video, but essentially this is all the notation that you need to know for now, that each individual function used to be described as a time function, but now it can be described as a set with n possibilities, okay? And it can either be finite or infinite set.